Hey, this is Arsenite from Rambling Regan. I hadn't done one of these in since like October when we're in December. <laughs> Either way, just wanted to do a quick catch up on things that have been going on in the background and, you know, answer questions and uh, basically general news vloggy stuff as I've like calling them. Uh, first things first, um, I hadn't realized that I didn't even announce that I did uh, the, the last two podcasts. I know the last one was just fairly recent. Um, but even the one from November. So yeah, both of those are up. Um, episode 19 and episode 20. Uh, what we're trying to do basically during the off season is uh, go through old Sasuke. So we review Sasuke 1 and Sasuke 2. And we didn't do this on purpose, but apparently it's the 20th anniversary next year. And we're going through old stuff that hasn't been basically aired in Japan in 20 years either. So, and a lot of people haven't had really the opportunity to go back and see the original shows. I happen to like them. Um, they're vastly different, but it's always interesting seeing what direction this show has taken from the early onset. And you know, of course, seeing everybody 20 years younger is always, always funny. And figuring out, you know, who, who hadn't started from the beginning, um, when they first came on, and you know, the impact of that. Because again, we hadn't really had the opportunity to really see it most of the time um people will start with the latter episodes especially during g4 days because that's what started you know middle to late sasuke as i like calling it and very few people went back to see the originals so we go through them and see how many of those obstacles actually have come back you know 20 years later so uh, those are up on William's channel and I'll put the link in the description. Um, feel free to follow because I do a lot of talking on those as well and I answer some questions, uh, fan questions from there too. And of course, all of those are listed on our website, uh, finalstagepodcast.com. So and it's up available on iTunes and on Podbean and of course on YouTube on William's channel. So yeah, uh, please show our support and uh, see those videos and listen to the uh, podcast. Uh, the next thing, I finally got the calendar up. Uh, thanks for the support on that. Uh, it's been a little bit delayed because I was waiting for some photos to come back. And I was, of course, right after uh, Thanksgiving that I got all the photos. So it took me a little bit to get all that organized while working on some of the uh, other Sasuke videos. Uh, but yeah, the calendars are up. It, there are two varieties. In fact, I just put one up this morning um, and it's still in the uh, approval stage. But it should be up by the time I put this, uh, uh, this vlog up. Um, there are two size calendars. The, I think it's the normal 8x11 and the other one's like by 14 or something like that. It's the extra large ones. Um, and then I just added a new one, the um, sort of like a desk calendar. There are a bunch of different varieties on, you know, the types of calendars that are available. And there's also other stuff, you know, like like mugs and cups and t-shirts and photo books and all kinds of different things on there that um, if you're interested in me putting something together and y'all are willing to buy it, I've been more than happy to put it up. It doesn't cost me anything to design any of these things. That's one of the beauties of the website because there isn't any, like they'll only print it when it's available. So, and yes, they do have the option of, you know, you buy a whole bunch of them at once in a, in a lower price and then, you know, as a fundraiser. But I just have it as whatever, you know, it's a lot easier for somebody to just order something directly from the website and have it shipped directly to you. I don't see who gets it. So... Um, there will be no middleman. It's not being mailed to me and then mailed back out. And I said, no, it goes directly from the website. And so on the website, they have the description of what countries are available, um, what the prices are. They actually have them, you know, separated by zones. So you can tell right off the bat how much it's going to cost. Um, it's always cheaper to get multiple things. And what I like about the website, of course, is you can make your own stuff. So, if, you know, you can support me. I only get something like anywhere between six, six to seven dollars um, per calendar that's sold. Um, I would assume it depends on whether or not you get it on the sale price or not, but it doesn't matter. A little bit um, helps and I appreciate it. <laughs> um, but you can do your own stuff as well. So if you're interested in, you know, making your own, you know, own things. Um, I actually found out that you can actually do... Um, get uh, $10 off um, sort of like as a referral thing and I'll put the uh, code on there as well it's I think it's E9VWYS 
um, I get uh, $10 from referring people and you get $10 off your first order. I think it only works once. So um, I would save it for like a really big order so then you can at least get that off. And then the other thing is that the website always has some sort of sales going on, varying degrees. Obviously right now the huge holiday sale is up. So there's, I think today is like 60% off all the calendars. Um, and that goes on for like one or two days, but there's always some sort of sale on. So go to the top and see deals and see what's available. Sometimes it's 20% off, 30% off, whatever, but every little bit helps. And, um, I'm going to see if I can try to develop at least a little bit more of that. What I'm trying to do is, uh, raise a little bit money to pay for, uh, my book. Uh, the, writing the book is obviously doesn't cost anything. Uh, publishing it does. So the publishing costs itself are not that much, but hiring an editor, <laughs> you all know how I write and even how I do these vlogs, they're kind of all over the place. I need somebody professional to read over the stuff to make sure that everything's coherent. That costs money and a lot of it, like a couple thousand dollars. So I'm going to just do a little bit here and there. And at the same time, you guys get something back. And so I'll probably do like another video of like the little odds and ends things that you can do, you know, um, things like Amazon. I actually have a referral thing on that. And um, I think Ebates is another one that, you know, it's just doing stuff that you normally do. Just um, having my referral thing on there. I just get like a, you know, a little bit, a couple of bucks here, a couple of bucks there. And of course, you know, any uh, mugs and t-shirts and um, calendars and stuff like that. But uh, everybody seemed to like the calendars from last year and um, everybody kept saying, when, when is it coming back? So yeah, it's up. And uh, so far the feedback has been great and I'm happy about that. Um, I've been fortunate to get a lot of great photos. Most of those are from uh, Saskia 32. There's also stuff that's happening during the year between that. And I try getting as, as, as um, recent as possible. In fact, Lee and Chi's uh, photos were like from like three weeks ago. That's as the most up to date as possible. So that's what I'm hoping for. So yeah. Um, in further news, I am working on the uh, Saskia, actually the, the Saskia 32 videos are starting to go up, the uh, the main ones, so I did three of them already on this channel obviously, so you can just see what's available. Um, it's day one, it's split up in three of them, so it's like an hour and a half total, so I split it up into three separate videos, and uh, which helped me in editing because um, I had some... Um, some rendering issues for some odd reason and um, so I'll probably end up doing the exact same way because uh, a couple of people told me that I actually like it that way so yay thank you <laughs> and um, I will be working on day two I was distracted by doing all the other stuff as well and of course it's the holiday season so my weekends are like shot <laughs> and so yeah I should be working sometime this week on getting that up and running and um, so I've also had a couple of tech issues, but I'm still working on it. Um, I still have no idea why my videos have really, really low sound. And so I have to basically jack it up in um, post-production. And sometimes they sound a little bit wonky because I'm amplifying a very low sound. But yeah, I'm working on that. William's going to see if he can help me on that as well. So um, that should be hopefully the next project that is up and hopefully I'll get it up by this week, but we'll see. It's again, it's the holiday season. It gets a little bit busy around here. So um, in news, uh, the Suska 33 application is up. That is deemed the 20th anniversary tournament. Um, I have no idea because if it's so early that it's going to be to a year or not, but just treat it as that's the one for 2017. Um, if we get a, another one bonus, great, but 33 is the one that's deemed as the 20th anniversary. Uh, Sasuke aired back in September of 1997. And so, you know, that makes the 2017 the uh, 20th anniversary. So Morimoto will be back. I doubt any of the All-Stars are probably back. I would assume Shingo will be back. No idea about Takeda. Um, but we'll see what the new era is going to look like. I'm cautiously optimistic. Um, <laughs> working on the video explain what my trepidation is and I'll, I'll deal with that this week. So uh, the other thing that literally came out of left field and you know the application has been up for Sasuke 33 for at least at this point a couple of weeks. And then out of nowhere sort of like oh yeah you know that application thing that's you know January 6th. Yeah. We're going to have another one that's due the exact same time. Kuroichi's coming back. 
Like seriously, the last time Kunoichi was on was in the infamous Kunoichi 8, which a good portion of the people really don't like. I am one of them. That aired in 2009. That, you know, by the calendar year that comes out, that would be eight years hiatus. <laughs> like, wait, what? So there are rumors of it being uh, a slightly different format, and so the name Kunoichi is tentative, but it's still like that idea, like it's the women's tournament that's coming back. And yes, you guys have been flooding me with messages of all the Americans that should be on that show. Y'all gotta remember, this is a Japanese show. If you want basically a Women of Ninja Warrior, like a w style, ask NBC! <laughs> so... Yes, I want a couple of Americans over there, but I don't want this onslaught of all the Americans that should be on its own thing. I mean, trust me, they should have their own um, Kunoichi style thing in the, in the United States. Lord knows we have plenty of able women that would be more than happy to take, uh, take part in that. Um, so I don't know who would be our representative, if any, in in uh, Kunoichi. Um, there has always been at least one American, so I would be very surprised if there wasn't, but we'll see. Um, I, with NBC being so, or should I say Esquire slash Comcast, um, are now basically back together again. Um, I have no idea. And again, y'all know I'm retired now, so I'm not going to start looking for this stuff. So I'm back to being a fan. I'm going to find out the same time you guys do. So <laughs> that's how I'm going to deal with this. So I'm looking forward to it. I want to see what that looks like. So 2017 is shaping up to be a pretty interesting year with uh, the 20th anniversary Sasuke show, the return of Konoichi after eight years, um, the uh, basically the spiritual return of, of Sportsman Number no. 1 in the uh, Sports Danchi show uh, sometime this, uh, uh, sometimes the next year coming up and of course the return of uh, Ninja Warrior back in the United States on Esquire so yeah 2017 is looking really freaking good for Ninja World so yeah I'm looking really looking forward to that I mean between that and all the spin-offs I mean I think the last one that has been at that start uh, I think started taping they haven't aired it yet um Australia just had one and um coming up I think is uh, Netherlands so it's yeah I think we're up to 10 now I, I, I don't know. It's like spawning babies. It's like rabbits. Every single time I turn around, there's like three or four more. <laughs> so it's a great time to have uh, to be a uh, ninja fan. So that's that's how, what I'll say with that. Um, so I'll go through uh, some questions while I have it. Okay, so I'm going to start going through some of the questions. And right off the bat, there's been a lot of questions on some of the uh, videos that I put on my vlogs referring to um, old tournaments and whatever. That stuff was, uh, we watched it live. So as it aired, we had, you know, recorded copies. Some people got it from like their DVRs and whatever. Um, I'm not gonna be distributing stuff. <laughs> you should know my policy from now. I'm not gonna start putting all of these videos up for your dissemination. I've had this channel for almost 10 years now. I have no interest in having my entire channel ripped down because somebody hasn't done their homework. There's plenty of places you can look for. Um, Y'all know the community that I'm part of. Um, if you're banned from there, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really sorry if you got yourself banned from SMF, but I'm not going to be giving out videos and putting full-blown videos on my site. I have no interest in having my entire channel ripped down because of copyright strikes. And especially now with um, uh, Ninja Warrior coming back to the US, YouTube's gonna be scrubbed of even more videos. And I'm not gonna, you know, I'll refer to them as, you know, as past history because a lot of y'all have actually seen these things or remember when it was first on. They exist, they're still out there. I'm not putting them on my channel. I'm sorry, but I'm not. Griffin Tremaine. Uh, I guess I love the format. When you post the next part, I'll pick up where this one leaves off. Super shway day one. <laughs> Thank you. Now I'm happy about that because I wasn't sure if it was a little too long, but everybody seems to like it because they like the stories, which is the part that I like the most. So yay. So I'll look forward to, to doing that. I'm not going to make it longer. God forbid. I don't want to make it longer, but I want to at least 
try to give you guys the idea of what it was like to be there. Um, you don't really get that on television and even when they had the quote unquote behind the scenes, that's the production stuff. Um, I'm more interested in, you know, the funny stories that are never shown on television. And that's what makes it more personal for me. So that's where I'm going to be focusing on. Daniel Buchholz, uh, wait, Ikitani was there? Yes, in fact, he was there with most of his uh, uh, samurai troop, uh, samurai, samurai rock or orchestra, I think it was called. I don't know, they've also been using the muscle musical name, which I'm not sure if they actually have legal rights to, but I'm not getting involved with that. <laughs> but um, yeah, he was there with a couple of other people. In fact, there were, I think, a total of like eight or so. But yeah, they've been just, he hasn't competed, obviously, and um, I don't know if he ever will again, but um, he's always there to support um, all of his other, you know, samurai troop guys, so yeah. John the Grey, Japanese word is smile. Yeah, but that's not the word that I was looking for because uh, what they usually do, um, I was told later, it's something like cheese for like cheese, like say cheese. Like I wanted him to smile, not necessarily say the word smile. So I was, uh, that's what I was told a little bit later. Either way, I completely forgot at that point. There, in fact, there were a lot of Japanese words that I totally forgot because it's, it's sort of like, you know, trying to do a crash course right before a test. Yeah, and then all of a sudden your entire brain just erases and you're standing there going, I know all this stuff, like seriously, I know all this stuff. Like even the part where I kept saying it was Dameda that was supposed to be stop, Dameda actually means no good, but it was basically, you know, between that Yamete, that stop, and, um, and Dameda, between those two, that's what was being yelled at that <laughs> It's just... Oh yeah, so yeah. every once in a while I remember it and everybody just turns around and shot going like, Hey, you know Japanese? I'm like, no. I'm like, damn. <laughs> There's like six messages to make a Viking um, Makoto Nagano video. Refer to my other statement. No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to put that stuff on YouTube so I'm going to have my entire channel ripped down by copyright strike. I'm sorry, but I'm not. Kai Ka, just keep doing what you're doing. Thank you! Because my question was, you know, if this is the, the format that you wanted the uh, Sasuke 32 videos to be in. So yes. Yay! I'll continue to do that. Six Destiny, I would like hearing the stories even if the video are really long. Thank you! <laughs> I'll still try to, I'll, what I'll probably end up doing, depending on the length, I'll still cut them like within like 30 minutes or so. I'll, like, I'll cut it in like half or thirds depending to try to keep at least the videos shorter. Um, what I might end up doing because of just the format, what's left right now is um, a day two, but that was split up between the rest, I think it was like, I think seven people that ran the rest of the first stage, the entirety of the second stage, the entirety of the third, and so, and then my final thoughts now, depending on how that works out, I'll just have those as three separate videos, you know, first, second, and third. And so we'll see, I'll, I'll play along with that, but um, that might actually help me out in figuring out the format. <laughs> and then one that I got uh, basically that was marked as spam. Um, when you curse at me, and you put it just kidding, it doesn't nullify the fact that you cursed at me. So please stop. And that's all I'll say on the subject. So um, luckily I've been doing okay with comments, uh, <laughs> although I've been getting some private comments, but, and there's always been a discussion on whether or not I should even bring these up or, or whatever, because um, some of you were actually surprised that I have gotten uh, hate mail and actually three death threats. So I want to make this clear, I will only keep continue doing these until they're fun. But if it got to the point where people were badgering me to get information on stuff or they don't like, if you don't like my opinion, either don't watch the video or put the dislike button. Please don't send me your hate filled messages. If you're having a really bad day, take time and just walk away from the internet. Because seriously, the way I think of it this way, if you're sending me hate messages, cursing at me and whatever, what response are you expecting out of me? So am I supposed to do it better because you're yelling at me? No, I'm gonna ignore you. 
So any more of those, I'll just continue blocking and then I'll just walk away. It's just as simple as that. Um, I was doing okay for a while and then they were starting to come right back again. Look, I'm not doing another fundraiser if I go to Japan. So some people were upset about that, which I'm a little surprised on, considering that <laughs> the last one was a complete struggle to, to get to um, enough for me to get to Japan. And then others are like, fine, they feel justified that that's happened. Uh, in which case, I really, really worry about you. <laughs> but it's just... It's a little frustrating, and this is just, this is a general uh, YouTube thing, and I've been warned about this by plenty of vloggers, that, you know, you're just gonna have a lot of these things and whatever. It's just like, the way I see it is like, what can possibly motivate somebody to send hate-filled messages? Luckily, lately, I haven't gotten anything about, you know, my looks, or what I've been doing, or even the content of the videos. It's all about how much they're angry. And so I feel bad because I know some of you. I've known some of you guys for a very long time. And I worry because I don't want anybody to hurt themselves. And at the same time, I will not stand for that on me. I've had a very, very stressful year. My entire life has been turned upside down. Things that I thought, you know, were fantastic and great. I had, you know, out of the seven, eight, seven of the eight years that I've been doing this, everything has been positive. And then all of a sudden, 2016, all of the trolls came out. So if you want to continue supporting me, that's great. If you hate me and whatever, unsubscribe from me, please. Yeah. Now, let me at least try to change the mood because it did get low, but it was something that's been bothering me the last, mm, about two weeks. I have a responsibility because the ones that have been supporting me and have financially supported me to go to Japan, I have an obligation to them to share my wonderful experience. And it was a fantastic experience in Japan. And yeah, they'll get some weird stuff and whatever, but that was tied to the tournament itself, not the experience of going to Japan. Twice! Which I've done twice, thanks to you guys. So I'll get those done, and I'll figure out a way of dealing with the hate mail and stuff in the background. <laughs> so either way, um, we're now in December. I'm not sure if I'm going to do another uh, vlog from this point. Probably the next one will be in January. This is the first year I actually started really really trying to develop more of a YouTube presence. Um, I know it's a different uh, demographic than on my blog and I have heard both the positive and negative on that. The constructive uh, criticism. I don't mind constructive criticism. That's how uh, people grow and learn. And um, I know a lot of stuff is not written anymore and some people miss that, especially those that don't actively speak English. And so, uh, at least when something is physically written, they can at least run it through uh, in a, a translator, even if it's an online translator, and you get a, a, a general idea of what's going on. You can't really do that with voice, so I understand that. One of the options was um, having this with um, actual closed captioning, but for to have them closed caption in different languages, I don't have that... Uh, ability to do that. So if people are interested in closed captioning something that I put out in English and I would I would actually put the English uh, closed captions, I'll make them available. If anybody is actually interested in translating them, like legitimate, not throw them in Google and expect that that's for real because I know a lot of you have a tendency to do that with the Japanese and it's completely wrong. Um, you know, Spanish, English, German, uh, French, uh, uh, Thai, Chinese. If you're interested in doing that, uh, just let me know. Um, one couple, couple messages um, privately. Um, YouTube has that. And I'll see if that's worth doing because that is a little bit longer, especially with a lot of my rambly videos. <laughs> that's a lot of text to be writing out. But if everybody is interested in that, I'll be I'll be happy to develop that if, if people are willing to do the uh, the captions. So yeah, that's we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm also still writing my book, which I've mentioned before. Uh, it's still a work in progress, and it will be for a little bit. 
um, I have gotten a lot of positive uh, feedback on it. Uh, <laughs> yes, it is on the radar of who do you think it is. And um, so they're more worried to make sure that what I have is what I have written is factual. Um, just to be clear, the vi the book the way I'm planning to do it now, as in like uh, December twelfth, <laughs> two thousand sixteen, is not going to be a straight up historical video, um, historic book. It's sort of like you know, like oh, on such and such date, blah 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 blah. I actually wrote two, f I think two or three chapters looking that way and it was boring as all heck <laughs> it, was, it felt like I was reading um, an encyclopedia then I went the complete opposite direction and my entire straight story I've said many times in many ways I don't think anybody wants to really listen to that and then I started going through um, just straight up stories but straight up stories without context can be a little confusing so the way I want to do this is from a fan's perspective, mine, and then um, seeing Sasuke through my lens, through the experience that I had through Sasuke um, from like at this point almost 10 years ago. And from there, uh, looking into the, um, the funny stories that, um, that make up the behind the scenes of Sasuke so it's not gonna be you know such and such tournament that person ended up passing this obstacle um that's not what Sasuke is for me so one of the things would be you know talking to someone like Shingo and Shingo had a story that was really really funny from there um talking to Akiyama Akiyama had many stories of all the stuff in the background and that I found really, really funny. Nagano, same thing. Um, a lot of, you know, who I call the STQers, the uh, Sasuke trial qualifiers, there's a bunch of stories from that. Um, Murimoto has a bunch as well. And so I want to see it from that perspective, and that will fill out each of the years. I've written plenty in blog format, but that's not quite the same format that you would do for a book. So, yeah. <laughs> so wish me luck on that. Yeah, this video has gone long enough and my uh, heater's been kicking on and off so you might have heard, heard that in the background and of course with me having to boost the signal it probably really is loud so I'm, I apologize on that. So I'll work on my own tech issues and until the next time, which will most likely be in 2017, have a wonderful holiday season, whichever holiday, if any, you uh, uh, celebrate. And Happy New Year, folks. I'll see you guys next year.